Hey guys, today I want to present a solution to the USA TSTST 2012 problem 3. At first, let's have a look on the problem statement. We are given a function from the positive integers to the positive integers, satisfying the following two conditions. At first, if the greatest common divisor of two positive integers m and n is equal to 1, then f of m and f of n are also co-prime. The second condition is that n is less than or equal to f of n is less than or equal to n plus 2012 for all positive integers n. Now we are asked to prove that for all prime numbers p, if p divides f of n, then p divides also n. To start with the problem, we want to assume that the given condition is false. So we find a prime number p and a positive integer n such that p divides f of n, but p does not divide n. To work on this assumption here, we want to use one of our two conditions on our function f. And of course, it is a good idea to use condition a, because it tells us something about divisibility. We want to choose the value m in such a way that it is divisible by p. So let m be equal to a times p and the greatest common divisor of a and n should be equal to 1. Then we get that f of a times p and f of n are co-prime. So since p divides f of n, this implies that p does not divide f of a times p. Together with condition b, we get that a times p must be less than f of a times p. Our goal is to bring this whole argument here to a contradiction. And indeed, this inequality here looks really promising because we have a lot of freedom in our variable a. We want to use condition a to bring this to a contradiction. And here we see that it would be great if f of a times p has a lot of different prime divisors because then it is easier to get a contradiction out of the right hand side. Moreover, it would be great if the number of prime divisors of a is small because then it's easier to achieve the equality here on the left hand side. So let's at first take a be equal to q which should be a prime number and here in order to get that the greatest common divisor of q and n is equal to 1 we also want that q is greater than n. Our second goal was that f of a times p has a lot of prime divisors. And in order to do this, let's at first notice that f of n is less than or equal to n plus 2012 for all integers n. Therefore, there are only 2012 possible values for f of a times p. This motivates us to choose prime numbers q1, q2, and so on, up to the prime number q2012, in such a way that all of the possible values for f of a times p are divisible by at least one of these numbers here. By the Chinese remainder theorem, we can find an r such that qi divides r plus i for all i between 1 and 2012. In order to get that a times p is congruent to r modulo all of these prime numbers here, we want that a is congruent to r divided by p modulo the product of all of these prime numbers. To do this division here, it's necessary that p is co-prime to this product here. So we want that p is none of these prime numbers and therefore we want to choose the qi such that qi is greater than p. Remember that we wanted a to be equal to a prime number q. And here Dirichlet's theorem tells us that we can find infinitely many primes q in this residue class here if none of the qi divides r. This can be achieved by just setting the qi greater than 2012 because then this condition here tells us that r is not divisible by one of the qis. Using the fact that f of a times p is less than or equal to a times p plus 2012 and this construction here, we know that there is an index i such that qi divides f of a times p. We know that qi and a times p are co-prime because a times p is congruent to r modulo qi. 
This implies by our condition A that the greatest common divisor of f of qi and f of a times p is equal to 1. This directly implies that qi does not divide f of qi. At this point, we can see that if we can find infinitely many prime numbers pi such that f of pi is equal to pi, then we can choose our qi to be a subsequence of these prime numbers and get a contradiction out of this argument here. So let's write down this claim that we can find infinitely many such prime numbers and prove this to finish our proof. To prove our claim, we want to use a similar approach as before. Namely, we try to find prime numbers p such that p plus 1, p plus 2 and so on up to p plus 2012 have a high number of prime divisors and then use this fact to prove that f of p must be equal to p. Let us denote the ith prime number by pi. We again only want to consider prime numbers greater than 2012 and therefore let's define k to be minimal such that pk is greater than 2012. This time we want to define r in such a way that r plus i is congruent to 0 modulo pk plus 2i minus 2 pk plus 2i minus 1. This can be achieved by the Chinese remainder theorem. Now again, by Dirichlet's theorem, we know that we can find infinitely many prime numbers q such that q congruent to r modulo the product of these prime numbers here. Let's take such a prime number q and write it as pl. And now we want to prove that for all these prime numbers pl, we have that f of pl is equal to pl. To do this, let's consider all the values f of p1, f of p2, and so on, up to f of pl. By our condition A, we know that since pi and pj are co-prime, we also have that f of pi and f of pj are co-prime for i not equal to j. Condition B tells us that pi is less than or equal to f of pi is less than or equal to pi plus 2012. And here, the left-hand side can be bounded from below by 2, and the right-hand side can be bounded from above by pl plus 2012 if i is between 1 and l. By our construction of pl, we know that all of the numbers pl plus 1 up to pl plus 2012 are divisible by one of these prime numbers here. And therefore, none of these numbers are primes. Thus, since f of pi is greater than or equal to 2, we know that f of pi has at least one prime divisor between p1 and pl. From this condition here, we know that all of these l numbers here are divisible by l different prime numbers. But only the prime numbers p1 up to pl are possible prime divisors. And therefore we know that all of these numbers here are divisible by exactly one prime number. In particular, f of pl is divisible by exactly one prime number. But by our construction, we know that pl plus 1 and so on up to pl plus 2012 is divisible by at least two different prime numbers. And therefore, since f of n is always less than or equal to n plus 2012, we conclude that f of pl must be equal to pl. Since pl can attain infinitely many possible values, our claim is proven and therefore we are done.